All right, Dorch, we're back. We're back, baby. All right, so here's what's going on today. Okay. Recently, I watched a Netflix unscripted show called Too Hot to Handle. It's a, it's a reality show. Oh, Jesus. And, and so then we started to talk, and we started to spitball some reality show ideas. You already had yeah. one. You helped me with another two. And so now what we're doing today is we're calling our friend, Swed, who is a producer in unscripted television, and we're going to pitch him these ideas, and he's going to basically tell us not only which one's the best one, but uh, if they can, if they're a go. Which one he steals and not give us any credit for? Yeah, let's find out. I'm going to call him. <laughs> We've got Evan Swedelson. Dorch, can you see him? I cannot, but that's fine. Well, what do you mean I that's know fine? What it oh, King Sweat, there he is. That gorgeous face of his. What's Look up, him. guys? How you doing, bud? I am impressed that the two of you, albeit virtual, are in the same room together. Unreal. We knew this was going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sweat, here's the deal. Yeah. First of all, you look great. No, you, look you guys look great. You, you guys, amazing, no, no, really, Dorch, you do. And Josh, I, you too. Thank you. I cannot wait to kiss you on that beautiful face of yours next time. Oh, what a guy. Second of all, uh, so Dorch and I are going to pitch you a few ideas. Yeah, cool. We have already briefed uh, saying that you are a producer in unscripted television. Okay. And Dorch and I have been spitballing some ideas and we feel as though they're great. And so now we're going to bring them to you and you're going to confirm or deny how we feel. So are you guys coming to me as like pals or like am I meant to be professional with like a, a discerning mind in that way? What, well, isn't that what, what, both? Well, isn't that how Hollywood works anyway? It's just all about who you know. So, I mean, we're coming to you as pals. Sure. We're trying to get paid. Did you come up with that one yourself? That's good insight right there. Yeah, you should saying, teach I a mean, course you know, or something. It's been, you know. All right, here we go. We're jumping in. Sweat's busy. He doesn't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy right, still in a reality wait. show ideas. I, no, again, I, I'm firing up my iPad. You're going to take notes. All right. <laughs> here we go. The first one is called Baby Boom, okay? So we track yeah. a couple, a, a couple that's contemplating having a child. They're, we're, we're getting the ins and outs, we're figuring out who they are, what kind of things they like, and, and their dreams of having a baby. And for whatever reason, maybe they can't have a child, maybe they're thinking about adopting, maybe they're a little young, maybe they're a little old, but they're just, they're, they don't know if they're ready yet. So we, we hear about all of their, their concerns about having a child. And then we send them off on their way. And then, <laughs> sorry. And then, oh, gosh. And then, <laughs> and then, in the middle of the night, we hear a ring on their doorbell. And then we start, real, we realize that there's a baby on their door and it's just waiting for them. So suddenly they have to take care of this, this baby for, you know. 48 hours, let's say, but we track them while they're, they're with this crazy crying baby. And then once like the 48 hours is over and if they accomplish it, they, you know, they get leveled up. And then all of a sudden, like a three-year-old shows up at their door and then they're with that three-year-old for a couple of days. And then we start moving into like actors. And then all of a sudden, like <laughs> a five-year-old shows up and then a seven-year-old and so on and so on. And then they get the full child experience in like a month and they stop at like 18. And then, and then they, they have to decide whether or not they want to actually have a kid. Yeah. For real. Baby boom. But here's the twist. After they raise it and after they finish, the final product is Rick Moranis shows up at their door. And that's the child. Dorch is back wanted, in the game. He's wanted Rick yeah. Moranis back in something. <laughs> but I've been willing this into existence for decades. Dorch, Rick Moranis was on our show, Prop Culture, on Disney+. Plus. It's coming really? out. In May, I, yeah. Uh, I, did read, I did read something that he's coming back into acting, so yeah. You know, it's funny. When you were uh, starting your pitch, Josh, the first actor that came to my mind was uh, like a Steve Gutenberg type. Sounds like a Steve Gutenberg movie. Um, I love it. I love it. I'm glad uh, your twist at the end wasn't like you blow the baby up or something <laughs> with Baby no. Boom. I love the, I love the title. Um, yeah. You're accelerating real life. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like... 
it's not as bad as I thought it would be, guys. I'm Ooh. impressed. Moving on. George, right. you're yeah. up. This is pitching um, right. out of three. So – so my pitch is exactly like Josh's, except you blow the baby up at the end. So oh my gosh. We're set on it's old. So. Yeah, love it. Um, so my show, it's called Arranged Marriage. And basically what you do is kind of like the date my, uh, date my mom kind of sense, except you just get like two single parents who are from cultures or believe in arranged marriage. And you have the parents get together without the children knowing have the parents go on a few dates with each other. And then after like the few dates, they're like, all right, I'll have my son marry your daughter or vice, however it works, vice versa. Meanwhile, the kids don't know what's going on. So you put them in a fake reality show thinking that they're going to win a ton of money. And then once their parents decide whether they're going to get married or not, they tell the children, like, we're just kidding. We were trying to distract you. You two are getting married. And then boom, arranged marriage. The kids are in a fake reality show. Well, you gotta distract them. Well, you gotta, well, you gotta distract them because I don't know, like, what lives they're leaving, and they're just like, I wonder what my mom's doing. I wonder what my dad's doing. Blah blah blah. You know, if you have to, you know, if they just live in New York City and they're like, hey, I love my life, and then your parents show up and like, hey, you're gonna marry this person. You know, arranged marriage. So, so two. What are we thinking? Like teens to like twenties. I we gotta. I gotta. I got to Google the arranged marriage age and, you know, it, it varies. So depending on what country you're coming, you know, so it sounds okay. like a horrible idea. I know that, but that I, was my pitch. No, no, no. So I going to put wait, a the pair. Well, no, baby the boom, baby boom. The, 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 <laughs> the parents are, are dating to then figure out if they want their it's kids the, to be married. It's date my mom, except the other factor is there's another parent that are dating each other. And the parents don't know, like the other parent doesn't know how their kid is, whatever. They're just yeah. going, just like regular arranged marriages, they're just going off of what they think. So. And when the, the, the dad sees that, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's, 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 okay. it's, green light it. <laughs> No on. baby boom, but yeah. We'll figure it out as we'll just figure it out as it goes along. All right. Third and final pitch. Dorch, I kind of switched this one up on you without telling you, by the way. That's fine. Okay. It's called Love at Last Sight. All right. So you have all of these beautiful 20-somethings entering uh, you know, like an exotic island or something to that extent, some uh controlled area where there's a lot of uh opportunity for people to hook up and a lot of opportunity for people to just make a lot of mistakes. But then you have these maybe two or four plants, like you have two women or you have two men and their one job, their goal is to make everyone on the island at some point say, I'm falling in love with you. And so it's this uh, show about relationships and when everyone thinks they're making this bond with these people, it's like these two master manipulators and they're just trying to figure out who, like how many people they can make say, I'm falling in love with you. Like how they all, they do on all of these reality shows. And then it's like this ultimate question because the first person to uh, do this wins $100,000. But it's this ultimate question of, is money more important than actual love? Hoping they would really, really actually make a connection with someone. And all these people they're making connections with don't know that they're actually being duped the entire time. Love you know what it family. feels like? It feels like, um, what would it be? The middle of the second act of a Freddie Prince movie, right? Oh. Where you find out that he's, he's, he's uh, FPJ we out here, you know what I'm saying? He's got this bet going on. Uh, I like it, and I'll, I'll raise you one by adding in uh, to the competition element of the show and getting people to say, I'm not here to make friends. Oh, which is a, another very yeah. big trope there. Yeah. King Sweat, that's why you do what you do. That's why no, he it. does what he does. I, okay. I like that you guys have started with really catchy titles, though, and sounds like you've worked from there, which I think is really smart. You okay, I got half one. pitches. We're not half assing these. I've got no, one more. Pitch. I'm saying you started with good titles first, and then you go from there. Oh, Dorch, okay, here's wait, the wait. Oh, you, Dorch, you're going to throw one a curveball in there? One will throw one more in there. Okay. You set up a guy or a girl, and there are three like people, almost like uh, the dating game. There are three people. She goes on three dates. 
you know, at the end of each date, either she kisses them or makes out or like goes home with them, you know, vice versa for a man, like whatever. But then at the end, you reveal which one of those three people is their cousin. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We out here. Family that's family. drama right there because like, man, they got the same chin. I don't know. That might be him. That, so. That's, we'll swear. Or, no, we, hold, well, hold on. Before we, before we go, that's, <laughs> unfortunately, that feels like the sort of television show we would be watching right now in 2020. Oh, where we would say you. to us, where we would say to ourselves, "I can't believe it's come to this." Yeah, oh, because how much but, else in the world has has come to that point? George, yo, you yo, cut it. me that check. You know what I'm saying? Cut me that check. All right. So, would have thought that you'd come out of this and the 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 show about incest this is the one that <laughs> you, get, you get a thumbs up yeah. for. <laughs> uh, so those are it. Well, how, do you feel good about any of them? I listen. I think you got something with Baby Boom. That's what stuck with me. Uh, I've already forgotten about the second one. And, uh, you know, incest for some reason, 2020, <laughs> here we are. That's the name of the uh, show, Incest 2020. And then as the years go on, Incest 2021. And here we are. You know, we are yeah, here. yeah. It's like the 2K franchise. Um, <laughs> guys, I, I'm actually really impressed. There you go. Yeah. Should we George him? We should hang up. Okay, my last question is, are, is there any possibility to get any of these shows greenlit? <laughs> totally. The second you publish this video, you're going to get a call from MTV or uh, TLC or somewhere else, some other, uh, you know, network. They're going to snatch it up. What is your plan? What, you, what do you guys want to do? Where do you want to go from here? I mean, this is as far as we took it. Pitching. Yeah, dude, I, dude, I don't even know what I'm having for dinner tonight, let alone <laughs> go from the shows. Yeah. Are you, well, I was going to ask myself... I was going to ask how you guys uh, haven't taken this creative vision and taken it to the next step already with, with any venture, but I realized, yeah, it's, you know, I'm, I'm surprised you even and, came up with a Zoom link. How long, have you, how long have you known us? <laughs> why would you exactly even right. first exactly that right. on us? Why, uh -oh. would, yeah. why would you even ask such a stupid question? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We literally, I literally, we, I called George two days ago about baby boom and we, we, we workshopped it. I was like, I want to talk to you about the, the, the reality show or re unscripted show. And he's like, you're still thinking about this? <laughs> <laughs> we need to come prepared for sweat. All right, sweat. <laughs> that's it. We've taken up enough of your time. That's it. No, good job, guys. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thanks for coming out. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's stew on them a little bit more. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe. You guys got a lot of promise. You're just young, talented, handsome producer types right there. I'm looking at. I'm I'm very impressed. My face says incest 2020 all over it. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Put that in your Tinder profile. The kids still use Tinder. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to run for senator and that pops up. All right. All right, Swed. Have a great Thanks, day. guys. Hey, Thanks, you too. Kids, Swed. Appreciate you both. Looking for M's like I lost a friend. Jump out of my bed. I feel like I hear music coming from like outside. Do you hear it? No, I don't. Let the voice in your head tell you where the music's coming from. <laughs> Pugilistic, my linguistics, RJ Ruder damage, y'all. And I rap it, pornographic, send it up the camera. Ooh, la, la, are we?